What's better than one monitor? Two, of course. Let's do this. Yo, dog. I heard you like RGB, so I put RGB on your RGB. Thanks, dog. But this is my show. Go back to Pimp My Ride. The new NZXT Kraken X63 RGB now with two 140mm RGB fans with an even larger infinity mirror display and new 7th gen Acer Tech pump. And with a six year warranty, you've got nothing to worry about. Get your RGB on. Link in the description to find out more. Isn't that right? Now, Pixel's probably not a brand you've heard of before, but they've been making monitors for a good while now. They're actually Target Components, which is a UK distributor. It's their kind of own in-house brand here in the UK. Now, Pixel make monitors for gaming, streaming, and even editing. So no matter what your needs or size, they'll likely have something to fit the bill. Did I mention? They're also pretty damn affordable. So here I've got their two latest models, the CM27G5F, which is a 27 inch 1080p curved gaming monitor, and the CM28GU1 28 inch 4K monitor, which in my opinion is more geared towards workflow, content creation and editing. Now with both of these monitors, while they are around the same size, they couldn't be further away from each other in terms of the specs. But we thought it'd be nice to kind of compare them side by side to give you a little bit of an understanding as to what's going to be the right one for you. As I seem to get this kind of question pretty much daily. Should I go 1080p with a high refresh rate or should I go with 4K at 60 hertz? Hopefully you won't be asking those questions after this. So in no particular order because so much of this is subjective, we're just going to start with the bigger one and work our way down. So the CM28GU1 gotta love monitor names, right? Is a 28 inch 4K monitor with a TN panel. For me, I'd say it's kind of more aimed at being an all rounder, making it perfect for editors and professionals, but still giving you the ability to game in your spare time. In terms of the design, it's not exactly groundbreaking, but how can a monitor be groundbreaking? There's a fairly typical size plastic bezel around the monitor and all of the menu buttons are on the back. For ease of use, there is a set of small raised logos on the front bezel so you know exactly what buttons do what without actually kind of really having to guess too much. Honestly, there's nothing worse than hitting buttons blindly trying to figure out exactly what they do. Taking a look at the stand and, well, I'm gonna be honest, it's not great. It's a bit small and just looks kind of cheap. The other downside of the stand is the fact that it doesn't allow you to raise or lower the monitor or even rotate it. You can tilt it a tiny bit, but this is kind of as far as it goes in terms of movement. Now, this may not be the biggest deal in the world to a lot of you, but depending on your setup or what you wanna use this for, it's definitely something to keep in mind. You could always pair it with, I don't know, a cheap monitor arm to give you that functionality, but obviously this comes at an added cost. All in all, you can tell the monitor itself is going to be, I, don't know, I guess, on the cheaper side of things, but it's not all bad. While the monitor as a whole is, let's say, affordable, Having a cheap stand like this helps to keep the price down, but it still has a pretty decent panel inside, which is, I guess, exactly what matters, right? So speaking of the panel, it's a 28 inch 4K TN panel with a five millisecond response time and a 60 Hertz refresh rate. So pretty standard stuff for your run of the mill 4K monitor. Now, these specs are not designed for gaming per se, but if you do want to game at 4K and take in some scenery, then it's not that bad. The CM28GU1 also comes with three HDMI inputs and a single display port to give you plenty of options to connect multiple devices to the monitor if you wanted to. Looking at the rest of the market, it's only really been the last few years where we've really started to see more of the one millisecond response times and crazy fast refresh rate monitors. And these are more aimed at, I guess, enthusiast gamers or the extreme end of the scale when it comes to professionals. While I'm sure most people would love a 240 Hertz monitor, your average day-to-day -day user just isn't going to need one and probably wouldn't even notice a difference over most standard monitors anyway. And of course, you'd have to pay extra for that. Now regarding price, this is where things get very, very interesting as the Pixel CM28 GU1 is currently available for 182 pounds on Amazon and we will link to it in the description below. Looking at other monitors on the market, this comes in around £60 or so cheaper than the competition. Sure, they, you know, they'll be from more well-known brands like LG and Philips and AOC, but you'll find with most monitors that they share the same panel. And pretty much it's just actually the frame, firmware and the modules that differ inside. 
I've got to admit that while again you could spend more and get a monitor with a one millisecond response time, again, most average gamers wouldn't even notice. And for the price, you're getting a pretty decent 4K panel with plenty of display inputs and a decent set of specs. So you can't really go wrong. Put it this way, I remember when 4K monitors launched and they cost literally thousands. So 4K aside, Player 2 has entered the game in the form of the CM27GF5, which is a 1800R curved 27 inch gaming monitor. Features a 1080p display and has a 165Hz refresh rate for starters. It also comes packing both FreeSync and G-Sync technologies, so you'll easily be able to get the most out of it no matter what GPU you have. If you have a GPU that is. Come on, we all know how sucky the market is right now. It is worth noting though that if you are using either the FreeSync or G-Sync technologies, the monitor will only let you change the refresh rate up to 144Hz, which is still going to be plenty fast even for the most demanding FPS gamers. Taking a look around the monitor itself, it has a much smaller bezel than its bigger brother. This is always nice to see as the less plastic the better in my opinion. Also, if you wanted to put multiple monitors like this side by side, it would honestly look much better with thinner bezels. Again, the stand isn't anything majorly fancy, but it seems to do the job and is a little bit better than that of the 28 inch monitor. The tilt function is a tad easier on this one, but as we saw on the CM28GU1, there is no way to rotate or move the monitor up or down. It just kind of is where it is, and hopefully that won't bother you too much. And sadly, unlike the 28 inch 4K, this one isn't visa mountable, so that's definitely something to consider. Style-wise, it's definitely kind of more gamery with red on the back as well as on the stand. What is it with companies always going red though? Maybe it's just my personal preference, but it feels like it's kind of been done to death a bit now. The back does have a little bit of style and curvature to it, not that you'd ever really see it, but it still looks better than just a boring box-like monitor. It also has some RGB. Well, kinda. It, it has B, meaning blue. We have been told that they are considering an ARGB version that may come out in the near future, and if you're not overly struck on the blue, luckily you can turn it off within the OSD. So back to the front, and the first thing you will notice is the 1800R curved screen, which will make your gaming experience even more immersive. So while the screen may be stuck where it is, all hope is not really lost. Honestly, when curved monitors and TVs first came to the market, I kind of, ugh, you know, I wasn't exactly sold on them, but over time, I've kind of grown to like them more and more. So what about that OSD that I was talking about? Well, the button to enter the menu is quite different to what you'd expect. It's more like a kind of joystick, probably because it's a gaming monitor and they thought that would be cool. You press it in to enter the menu and to turn the monitor on and off, and pressing it in once will open up the menu, whereas hitting it twice will turn the screen on. Once you're in the menu, you can push it in the direction you want to navigate through, and well, it's quite simple. When you're there and where you kind of want to be, simply push it to enter the highlighted menu, and Really, it's that simple. Now, one of the cool things that you will notice in the menu are crosshairs. Yes, you can actually overlay a crosshair on the monitor, so there's no need for software or to put tape on your screen anymore. When it comes to the display side of things, the 27 inch 1080p panel is gonna be the better option for gaming. Not only does it have that 144 or 165 Hertz refresh rate, but the 1080p display is also gonna allow for more graphics cards to be able to better utilize all that it has to offer, especially with the lack of them in the marketplace right now. Now, one thing that would have been nice to see is a one millisecond response time instead of the five milliseconds, much like the 4K panel. While response time isn't the biggest deal in the world, it would have been nice to see something a bit faster. For those not in the know, response time is the time that it takes for colors to change from one to another, or in this case, gray to gray. And with most things, the quicker this can be done, the better. Would most people ever really notice a difference between five milliseconds and one millisecond? Probably not, but as gamers, we've kind of been conditioned to believe that one millisecond is the best. So that is what we must have. When it comes to inputs, it's got a single HDMI, display port and USB port, and also a 3.5 mil audio jack. As for the pricing, again, it's pretty attractive. The CM27 GF5 can currently be had for around 194 pound from Amazon. And again, I'll put the link in the description below. Now I've got to admit that again, it is a pretty decent price for kind of what it's got to offer. Having a look around and while there are still other monitors at I guess similar prices, this is still the cheapest one of the specs we can currently see on Amazon. I mean, 200 pound for a gaming monitor with these specs isn't bad at all, especially as it is 27 inches. 
Most other monitors like this were on average around 30 to 40 pound more expensive, which means this isn't a massive saving, but every bit helps, especially when it can be spent on other components or even a new game. So what do we think? Well, as mentioned, and you would have surely noticed by now that both monitors are aimed at different people. However, they do have a similar price point. So at least they have something else in common apart from their manufacturer. In terms of pricing, both of them come in at sub 200 pounds and on average are a fair bit cheaper than the competition on the market, which are really kind of what's gonna make them more appealing to the masses. Now, the CM28GU1 is designed, I guess, more so for professionals. And overall, I can agree with that. While I didn't dive too deep into kind of editing when testing it out, I did open up Affinity Photo and just have a little play around and compared it to the AOC monitors that we have on our desks at the moment. And in all honesty, I was pleasantly surprised at the color representation. The colors were crisp and clear and they looked pretty damn good. And I couldn't tell too much of a difference between the two different monitors. I mean, for 182 pounds, getting a monitor that is 28 inch and 4K, I mean, that's not really too much of a bad deal now, is it? Especially when you consider it probably has the, <laughs> exactly the same panel inside than other more well-known manufacturers that are using in theirs. And well, they're charging you a lot more for it. As for the other monitor, the CM27GF5, which comes in at 194 pounds, you are getting a good 27 inch gaming monitor that features a 144 Hertz or 165 Hertz refresh rate, depending on your usage. As I mentioned earlier, it would maybe been nice to see this one come with a one millisecond response time, but don't let that five millisecond put you off. It's still a very capable monitor for gaming, especially for those FPS and faster paced games where every millisecond matters. While the resolution is only 1080p, this should be fine for most gamers, and being 1080p will appeal to, I guess, a broader spectrum of gamers without needing you know, top of the line graphics cards, which are nigh on impossible to even get your hands on at the moment. Both monitors serve their own purpose and they actually surprised me for what you get for your money. And I mean, not much money at that. I definitely think that their biggest selling point is their price, but price isn't everything. They need to perform great too. And from my time with them, yeah, both of them actually do. So there you have it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And also let me know what monitor and resolution you're rocking at the moment. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, you know exactly what to do. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.